The USDA found out in 2018 that Chinese investment in the agricultural sector has grown tenfold over the past decade. Now the Chinese Communist Party's latest efforts happen to be taking place along the plains of North Dakota. And here to talk about it, we're happy to have on North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer. Senator Kevin Kramer, thank you so much for joining us on the Capitol Report. It's my pleasure. Thank you for uh, the opportunity and for the interest in this story. Senator, a company in your home state of North Dakota with close ties to the uh, Chinese regime uh, has recently purchased 300 acres of farmland. Uh, this purchase is raising some concerns. Uh, what are some of those concerns? Well, there, there's a, one very specific uh, concern that has a lot of people focused on it, and that is that it's in fairly close proximity to the Grand Forks Air Force Base. Uh, the Grand Forks Air Force Base is a very important uh, ISR uh, mission. We right now uh, fly Global Hawks uh, around the world. They're very important uh, um, surveillance, as you know, uh, aircraft. We also just uh, a couple of weeks ago cut the ribbon on a new um, space development agency facility at the base that uh, will be the first ground station for a, the uh, what's called tranche one of the uh, 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 low orbiting satellites uh, or uh, yeah, low earth uh, orbiting satellites. And uh, obviously that surveillance capability uh, includes the uplinks and downlinks of lots of data and and whatnot so the the prospect of the of the chinese government the chinese communist party which is obviously quite well known for its ability to spy and its willingness to spy and steal um that that's of concern but i would have to say that for me personally it's really a, even a broader concern than that and that is the idea that um we've already in i think in, in many respects made ourselves as a country too vulnerable uh, our supply chain too vulnerable to uh, to adversaries and other regimes, and certainly the food supply is an important part of uh, national security. And the idea that we would somehow allow investment in our state, in our country, um, in our food supply after we've seen nefarious behavior already with uh, with the uh, supply chain for food by the the Communist Party, the Chinese Communist Party, particularly through the pandemic. Senator, there's a lot packed uh, packed in there. Uh, local municipal level officials who may not be privy to what you are, uh, to national security threats, want to oftentimes entice business and will right. sometimes overlook the CCP threat. How to manage this disconnect or should the federal government have more to say over such acquisition? Yeah, so really good point. I, um, I don't really like the federal government to have much more to say about much of anything at the local and state levels. Um, I'm in very regular contact with Mayor Boshensky. The governor, Governor Burgum, has asked for my assistance as a member of the Armed Services Committee to, to um, get more review, better review, and to make sure we inform them of any specific threats. As I've often said, and as I just said a little bit ago, it's really the broader threat. I think, frankly, I think as a national strategy, we ought to find ways to decouple uh, ourselves from, um, you know, from China and not find more ways to to bring them in, uh, particularly with investments in our country. So um, I am supporting, it, along with Senator Hoven, uh, and and the city itself has asked through a lawyer for a, a CFIUS um, investigation or, or review. The problem with CFIUS is that agriculture is exempt from CFIUS. That's the uh, Committee for Foreign Investment. Uh, so they would have to make an exception uh, on this one. But we also, of course, um, Marco Rubio, who's the ranking member of the of the Intelligence Committee, Mark Warner, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, they've come out in opposition to this because they have intelligence concerns. Um, but we're we're you know we're going to try to provide every tool that we can as a federal as federal officials to help the community and the state make the best decision that they can make. Um, but the decision ultimately is theirs; it is not ours. Uh, even though I am adamantly opposed to to this uh, to this. Uh, investment being in in my in my state china has been a predatory investor for a long time in a lot of places you, you look at um you know the belt and road initiative of course and we're certainly not a third world country by any stretch but they've demonstrated a willingness to use economic enticement to gain access to very important assets whether it's a port in sri lanka or an airport in uganda um they are they are very strategic and uh, they're very uh, quite open, frankly, uh, about some of their tactics. I just don't think we ought to be, uh, during this time especially, 
this time being a time when when we're we're watching a, a war play out in Europe where communist nation is trying to spread communism in Europe and you're looking at China who's been quite open about their desire to reunite their their old China and, and uh, speaking specifically now of course of Taiwan so I just think we're it's a peculiar time to be adding a Chinese Communist Party influence into our country. Senator, it's being reported that President Biden is considering rolling back the China tariffs in an attempt to uh, tame inflation. Uh, do you think the gains would outweigh the losses from this potential move? I do not. I, I think uh, I strongly support the, the tariffs. And I think with China's nefarious behavior, in fact, that we, um, I think they make the case for us. We've got to be very careful, and certainly we've become addicted, quite frankly, as an economy on cheap stuff from China. Um, but there's been a cost to that, whether it's the ethical or moral cost of, of uh, slave labor and a lack of human rights, or whether it's been the economic cost of, of losing much of our again, back to supply chains, that we've made ourselves vulnerable to adversaries, whether it's um, you know pharmaceuticals, food, energy, um, you know, t just take as an example, solar panels and 75 percent of the of the uh, things are going to make a solar panel come from China at the same time it, as our country is has a strategy to try to have more solar energy, um, critical minerals. Similarly, uh, uranium for nuclear power. I mean, there's so many disconnects here. What I think we ought to do is have a strategy that's aimed more at freedom loving countries that are more similar to us um, not to say we, w we don't want to do business with with other nations and we certainly want to be able to sell stuff but we've got to be careful about that strategy and we can't just simply be addicted to cheap stuff and as a as an economic strategy because in the end of, at the end of the day it ends up costing more than you gain senator kevin kramer thank you my pleasure thanks for the opportunity Stocks fell across most sectors. Investors prepare for another rate hike by the Federal Reserve. Inflation rose to a new high of 9.1 percent for the month of June, increasing the cost of living for Americans and making higher interest rates unavoidable. Crude oil prices also fell by about 4 percent today, indicating an economic slowdown. Meanwhile, lines at food banks are getting longer as more Americans turn to handouts to offset surging food costs and gas prices. Many are reported to be arriving on foot instead of driving. And some families with jobs are visiting food banks for the first time, finding it impossible to get by without some additional help. Senator Josh Hawley is calling on the Department of Energy to investigate the Biden administration's shipments of oil to China. According to a Reuters report, the Biden administration exported over 5 million barrels of oil from the U.S. emergency oil reserves to Europe and Asia in June. They went to countries including Italy, the Netherlands, as well as communist China. The move contradicts President Biden's promise to bring U.S. gas prices down. The senator wants the Department of Energy Inspector General to explain whether the agency has internal controls in place to prevent transfers of U.S. oil. He also wants to know exactly how many barrels of oil went to foreign markets, including China. When it comes to protecting the United States from the threat of the Chinese Communist Party, what role should Congress play? Robbie Smith, a national security expert, tells us many big bills related to China are not moving forward on the Hill because lobbying firms are actively taking the Chinese Communist Party's side. Here's our conversation with Robbie Smith. Robbie Smith, thank you so much for joining us on the Capitol Report. Thanks so much for having me. Robbie, FBI Director Christopher Wray and his British counterpart at MI5 um, jointly came out to warn of the threat of the Chinese Communist Party in which it poses to the West. These warnings uh, really mean nothing without action. What should Congress or could Congress be doing to protect us from the threat of the CCP? Absolutely. There's a lot Congress should be doing and can be doing in this space. Uh, notably, there's actions that we hope the Judiciary Committee will be taking to back up and further support the statements that have recently come out from Director Ray and from MI5. 
We know that there are legislative measures that can be put in place to strengthen DOJ's ability to pursue these nefarious actors and these, uh, you know, spies. That there were programs that were authorized um, and in place um, under previous administration on the matter, and that they could be reinstated. Uh, beefed up, they can have additional funding uh, put to them, as well as new authorities given and congressionally authorized to make them permanent and statutory. I think that uh, we are seeing increasing examples, whether it's with university professors um, and researchers and uh, research done uh, oftentimes through taxpayer funds on college campuses that is being compromised, uh, being taken uh, abroad to China. We've seen it in the, the private sector through different forms of corporate espionage. You just mentioned Chinese spies and uh, a few areas where they have been active in the United States, college campuses, obviously uh, in, in the corporate world. Um, the Justice Department has just indicted five people for carrying out uh, espionage operations for the CCP while working for the U.S. government. How deep does the CCP's infiltration go in our society? It's a very uh, deep operation. Um, you know, these these five individuals who, you know, uh, have been indicted is, is quite alarming and concerning. And I think that there needs to be greater transparency, you know, the, in the intel community and in the, uh, you know, the, the executive branch. There are certain standards that must be uh, met and that they are held accountable to. But this needs to be broader. You know, when it comes to FARA registration, for example, or contributions to think tanks, contributions to universities, um, you know, certain entities and, you know, broader lobbying that happens in Washington, D.C., um, you know, to the institutes that are housed on college campuses. There's a lot we don't know about where money is coming from, about where influence is coming from, about why certain uh, policies are being advocated for. And that's a space that I think we need to dive into deeper and we need to know more where Congress has a role and a voice, I think, to require transparency and, and linkages to these these funds. And there are some pending measures in place right now, I know, at least in the House, that could be taken up. And I'd like to see more of that. But ultimately, I think it's going to come down to protecting um, and being involved in local communities and community organizations, whether it's chambers of commerce or rotary clubs, uh, to know exactly who's who's involved in your community and why. And then for businesses and you know corporate leaders to be um, scrutinous with their employment and to you know report things to uh, the authorities whenever something looks wrong, um, and to be sure that we're protecting our you know trade secrets and uh, and you know beyond. You mentioned a lot of very interesting and important points there. You touched upon uh, lobbyists. Um, is another layer of complexity in all of this the fact that so much business is done by powerful American companies with China uh, who have significant lobbying power in Washington, D.C.? And so a lot of these things are overlooked or ignored for the sake of profits when it comes to China? Oh, I definitely think that's a component of the situation right now. Um, you know, whenever these big bills are moving on the Hill, whether it's China competition bill that may or may not be moving forward any longer, or the annual defense bills, you have, you know, lobbyists um, taking up the side of, uh, you know, Chinese companies, and there's a, a lot of linkages there. I think one example is the DJI uh, drone manufacturer and their linkages um, to China and the support that they get then from, you know, lobbying firms on their behalf. And then you have other groups who sometimes are smaller, less well-funded, who are going out there and trying to be sure that there are, you know, protections in place to be sure that America isn't investing in unmanned, you know, aerial systems that uh, could be compromised. And so I think that the corporate interests are, are big there. But I, I think, it's broader. It's about the entire agenda of Wall Street, um, frankly, investing in China and this continued pressure from BlackRock and others to increase Western exposure to Beijing and to pour pensions and retirement dollars and you know investment funds into the Chinese economy, oftentimes uh, without taking any consideration for uh, national security factors, geopolitical risk, or even what America's best interests are. So in the lobbying world in Washington, it can be very, you know, specific to certain bills, certain goods, certain topics. But writ large, I think it's a systemic issue that we have to be serious about trying to right size and tackle in terms of, you know, what kind of transparency do we need um, in investing and in, in lobbying and in the financial flow space? And also what kinds of, um, you know, possible regulation do we need to try and be sure that America's interests are being protected um, more than they are right now. Robbie Smith, thank you. 
Thanks, Steve.